Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Today, we have a very, very special show with Hillis Pugh. All of his links will be in the description box below. This was actually a show inspired by a comment that one of our viewers here on Esoteric Atlanta made from Tablet 11 of the Emerald Tablets, speaking about races and cosmic genealogy. And so today we're going to be focused on Sirius, the star constellation Sirius. I, of course, have done many shows over the Palladians, the Lyrans, the Acturians. And so now we really want to focus on Sirius. Now, you might not think that you know a lot about Sirius, but did, do you know most of us know this phase called the dog days of summer? Did you know that that's in reference to Sirius? Back in the Egyptian times, the rising of the star Sirius often coincided with the summer solstice. So every time you say the dog days of summer are upon us, you're referring to the star Sirius. But why do they refer to it as a dog? Well, the constellation looks like a dog. Sirius is one of the closest stars to the Earth, being only 8.6 light years away. According to Gaia TV, stars have helped for the mythologies and religions of mankind since the beginning of existence. It's the brightest star, a bluish-white star, and it's 40 times brighter than our sun. The ancient Egyptians often associated Sirius with Isis and Hathor. And to this day, many of the Egyptian temples are located on the alignment of the constellation of Sirius. Now, with that being said, on to our show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I'm joined here with my friend, Hillis. Some of you guys already know Hillis because he's my <laughs> colleague, too, with the C. <laughs> How are you today, Hillis? I'm good. It, it's what's today? Today's Thursday, huh? It's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. It's a real, it's an amazing day, you know, just moving in the new flow of energy as we are, you know, coming towards the end of summer, the opening of new portal energy, the end of full moon energy. So there's like all this stuff that is coming up to heighten the space of awareness and consciousness. And that's why, I mean, we were talking before camera, before we, I hit record, and I keep laughing that, you know, that phrase, the Karens, the Karens of the world wanting to speak to the manager. I'm like, when I die, I'm going to ask to speak to the manager. Like, what the hell did I sign up for? <laughs> this humaning is not that fun. So anyway, but yeah, it's it's a time of great expansion. And I've, I've quoted you a lot, Hillis, because, you know, we, we call this, you know, generically, we've called this time the Great Awakening, but it's the Great Re-Remembering, yeah. as you say. And I think that's why so many people resonate with stuff that I put out with your channel, which, by the way, guys, before we get into the topic at hand, I just want to go ahead and share a screen here. I'm going to, obviously, Hillis' oh, links will be down in the description box below, but make sure you are subscribed to Hillis's channel. He does lots of great little meditations. You do live shows too, right, Hillis? Yeah, my right now, the Cosmic Insight show, which is a weekly show, is on hiatus right now. Okay. Um, because we are in the process of great transformation, you know, with myself and my co-host. And so it's not just, you know, taking a step back and reanalyze it's just really allowing me to really embrace who i am fully becoming in this moment yeah well that's awesome and it takes a lot guys putting up up, up stuff on the channel does take a lot and hills is working his ass off i do want to say too we have to give a very special thank you to our sponsors asia i've got i told hills i was going to do this i know that looks kind of gross online but this is a combination this is one of my favorite things to drink in the afternoon especially and <laughs> let me um pull this up for you guys so you guys can see what it is i'm actually drinking um this is part of these little packets that asia has and so my drink today i do this every day it's all it's all three it's the energy mood and the mind i combined all three of them together the mood and the mind like help. I'm, I'm very Vata. I'm very hyperactive energy. And so sometimes I need to like do stuff to calm that down. 
Um, obviously, I practice every morning, but my energy gets so high up that I the mood and the mind help me come down. And of course, the energy actually stabilizes my energy a little bit more than anything. So that's what I'm drinking. It's a cell performance variety pack. All three of them are in here and it just makes boring water taste a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never would have thought about putting all three together. I've done energy and mind and then the mind and food, but never all three. Three. So that's an interesting combination. I'm gonna have to try that. Not to try. Yeah, it's it, well, Dr. Silverman gave me that idea actually. So, um, <laughs> and it, so I was like, I should try because in my mind, and maybe that's my OCD mind. I was like, I have to drink them all separate. And I was like, no, you don't. You just drink them all together. When Dr. Silverman said that. So, so yeah, <laughs> you guys, if you're interested in something like that, it makes your water taste. It, it's so much easier drinking water when it tastes better. So. <laughs> So, Hillis, I'm so excited about our show today, and I text you. Oh, I'm going to pull it up too. So, I, you've been reading the Emerald Tablets as I have been reading the Emerald Tablets, and we can talk more about the information that Thoth is giving us in these tablets. But I have this awesome subscriber, and I hope I don't embarrass him by pulling this comment up. But I thought it was such a great comment because in this video, which was Tablet 11, I believe, I'll put it down in the description box below. I kind of in my commentary, go into something that that Thoth speaks about, which is the little races, the great race, which is something I've spoken about a lot on this channel. We know the Brothers of Darkness, as he calls them in the Emerald Tablets, um, are in this battle against the Brothers of, of Light. And so we see this play out in our world where they try to divide us so much by uh, race, religion, gender, all these types of things. And I, I do think most people are sick of it at this point. Um, yeah. But what they're what they're trying to divide us on is actually the one thing that strengthens strengthens us as a as a planet. And this is why our planet is so fought over is that our races, our DNA we are like mutts as far as we are all combinations of all these different galactic heritages. And that makes us the strongest, the healthiest, the most powerful. And so with, I, I spoke about in this video, Hillis, I said that like, for example, this is just a tiny little example, like kind of a min minute example. People who have blue eyes like myself are, are, are almost immune to what they call snow blindness. And even though I don't live in an area that snows, neither does Hillis, I have been in a situation before where I can kind of attest that, yeah, I could see better than the people I was with. And so if, if blue eyes are able to navigate in the snow, then what else do these other characteristics of other races have that are these amazing abilities that if we work together, we can really become one of the as we're destined to be one of the strongest planets in the galaxy. And so I will say I had this comment. I'm a little bit confused with this video. I'm a black man. Well, there's no such thing as black people. I'm a darker skinned man to be more correct. I would like to know if you have more of the planet Sirius in me or anything else. And how can I tap into my source and what, what is the benefits of connecting to my source? I'm hoping I explain my question correctly. It's also confusing and new to me. And I will say it's all—it's new to all of us. This is stuff we're rediscovering through our own research. And so I, I actually referenced Hillis in the comment back and I text Hillis. I was like, let's do a sh let's just talk about Sirius because I've talked a lot about the Pleiades, the Octurians, the Lyrans. So let's talk about, talk about Sirius. And this is the reason why I talk about it being predominantly... Like we're, we all have a little bit of that in us, right? But right. but people who are predominantly darker skinned are going to carry more of that planet, and it's a really really powerful planet. People like Hathor, Isis, mm -hmm. Osiris, like this is a powerful planet. And so I thought, let's let's because I know you, Hillis, you got a lot of that in you. So let's let's yeah. start with that. What is Sirius? Where what can we say about Sirius and people who have a lot of is it Syrian? I don't know what the correct yeah uh, Syrians. Serious. And, you know, anytime when I say, yeah, I'm from the planet Sirius, people think, are you serious? Like, <laughs> like, like serious. I'm like, no, not serious, but serious. And I'm like, yes. and, and so it's one of those homophones. <laughs> well, then, then, what's that? Of? Isn't there like a radio app programming? Yeah, yeah Sirius XM radio, whatever. But the thing is, so it, it was, I find fascinating about this is when I, I, I knew nothing of the planet Sirius until I did my Lemoyne attunement. 
Mm-hmm. And so it was in this way I began to discover and learn more about them through the energy work that I do by channeling and connecting with this energy and information. And as I went through my research of of information and channeling, self-channeling, and when I was doing the research, it would just confirm the energy that came to me was that one of the things that if we understand on the planet, and I'm sure everyone has Gaia TV, who's in the spiritual community has seen Gaia TV, and how some of the uh, megalithic structures on the planet are always pointed towards Sirius, especially around the time of the summer solstice. Yes. So one of the things that we have to understand that uh, planet Sirius is not just a planet itself, it's also considered a constellation. It's the planets of three. And if you know anything of the universe, Everything comes in threes. So the primary planet is Sirius B, which I believe is the largest of the three. Then you have Sirius A, and then you have Sirius C, which is a dwarf planet. And not a lot of people know of Sirius C. And the reason why I bring this up because it's very important to acknowledge. And I and I'm also looking into presently into doing a, an initiation with this culture, and this culture is called the Dodon tribe. They are an indigenous culture in Africa, and they have very strong connections to the planet Sirius. Now, if you go to other cultures on the planet, such as the Egyptians or uh, the Indians or any other uh, culture where the either also either uh, Tempe, Golete, that as well, yep. and yep. all the other megalithic structures and their cultures, they all have something that points them to Sirius. But the Dogon. Uh, tribe, they do not. They had godlike beings descend upon them and they shared the information of that part of the solar system with them. And this information has not been, has only been shared verbally. It has not been communicated writtenly in any form since the visitation of centuries ago. And I find that fascinating that if you want to learn more about Sirius or want to learn more about the Dogon tribe, I recently discovered this group uh, through actually a place that I'm going to in New York uh, in November, uh, and I'll share about that later, uh, to where they have classes. And hopefully I can, if when I go to New York, I can sneak in and, and get a, a session or a class and get more information about their initiation process to become a Dogon initiate. Well, let me ask you just to make sure, because I want to put yeah. a link for people, because this is f- fascinating. So that's how you spell it, right? The Dogon. People. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Right. Awesome. So there's a place in New York that. Well, no, well, the place I'm going to is like a healing center, and the healing okay. center has a connection to this, to to the tribe who does these initiates, and so. Wow. Yeah. And so there's no coincidence. No, uh, no, that, that not. this is happening now because you know, uh, and I can't remember uh, the gentleman's name right now, but just the guy, uh, oh, something calls it on Gaia TV, a black guy. He talks about the immortal tablet, Billy Carlson, barely, Carl- yes. barely, Billy Carson. Listen, okay, yes. Now, yes. I gotta admit something to you, I've, I've pretty much stalked him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I didn't freak out because I want to get him on my channel so bad because I think he is just so he's so he his information he is literally an expert like an academic yeah. expert when it comes and I agree with so much of what he says and I have literally yeah. I've sent him emails I'm like trying to yeah get and the thing is I really appreciate how he brings the information forth the thing is yeah. he's not like someone unlike myself what I channel most of the information I receive and there's no true way to uh authenticate what i say unless there's some coincidence of information that i research later down the line he has researched this information for years and so i appreciate what he even talks about and how and i forget what show it was where he even goes in depth about the dodon tribe and how they are the only tribe on the planet that has kept this information through verbalization there's been no communication about this. And so for your your guest, the, the person who watches, he says he considers himself a darker skin colored man. Heck, you know, we all have that aspect in us. Mm-hmm. And so 
what's fascinating is that it doesn't matter if you are a dark skin color person or not, you have this information within you. Yep. And the best way to connect to that is creating a practice, a practice of, or a ritual, so to speak, whether it's a meditation where you sit or in the bed or lie in the bed or sit next to your bed or stand in the shower. I meditate in all kinds of odd places. And so just to connect to your source, let's find out what's true for you. And once you find that truth of self, then you can connect to the source. And to your source, if you like assistance, I'm offering my help to help you connect to that energy because it is all around. This is just a matter of how we perceive it. And, and the beauty and the magnificence and yet the simplicity of it all. And let's talk about that too, because that's what I was saying in my video. It's that, so we have these 12 tribes, they say the 12 tribes of Israel, which is not coming from Jacob's line, you guys. It's coming from the galactics. So, and it's even more than 12. We just, I think they pick 12 like big ones. So what I was saying in my video is like, okay, you look at me and I'm, I'm a white girl, right? So dot predominantly, that means that my galactic heritage is predominantly Palladian and Lyran. But that does not mean that I don't also have Sirius in me as well. It's just not as dominant. And you can see that in like, if you ever take your DNA, you can see that, that you have for a white person, you might have a bunch of Europe, but then you have like 2% African, you know? And so it's like owning that, that heritage how bigger to, in order to come into your own your right hill is like that is why the ancient cultures of like india and the egyptian alchemies the a priest and priesthood of isis they all involved some form of movement therapy or exercise within their religion because it was helping the person get into their body to be able to to tap in tap into that subtle body so they can start to yeah. feel the the because the, your dna is your antenna you know, it's, right. it's so to feel that aliveness. And that's why I keep like shaking people. I'm like, look at the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Look at it. It's all the races of the world are together on these hieroglyphics. What does that tell you about ancient Egypt or Atlantis or these ancient civilizations? They knew things. They knew that they had to work together. The Native Americans had a, um, and I'm paraphrasing a story they would tell their children that every single race race or group of people had something to offer and the trick was learning to work together and that's what the egyptians do that's why you see these beautiful i mean there's even like we've talked about on this channel hillis they're blue people where the fuck are the blue people i mean angie found them in kentucky <laughs> like, like, uh, yeah. like, blue. well i mean and if people have a if people follow me and have a notice but now pretty much almost everything i wear is a shade of blue yeah well, and, and so serious, and actually the the color blue is a connection with the series. Yeah. yeah, it's the blue star, right? And uh, not only that, also has a strong connection to Arcturus as well, because that's the planet of healers. And, and I just want to get into this really quick. So you know how every planet has some sort of, is known for something. Yes. So, so Sirius is one of the oldest, if not the oldest planet in the galaxy. And right. there's three of them. So each one has their own specialty. And, you know, it's part of the constellation of Orion's belt, which is the warrior in. Yeah. Not only is the planet known for their warriors, they're also known for, for healers, protectors, their great wisdom and knowledge. And so any war, and, and when we think of the term warrior, we think of it as someone who's a fighter. But the also warrior is also one who protects. And what are they protecting? The wisdom, the knowledge, the information of the universe. And so with that being said, we move to the energy of the Arcturians, which is like the planet Earth, which is majority of water, a water planet, where it's filled with healers. And why is water so healing? Because it, it's, it moves, it preserves, it is, it is, it is, it's the energy of life. Yeah. And, you know, you have the energy of the Palladians who are more so uh, a wisdom keeper, you know, and then you have the Lyrans. I'm not sure about the Lyrans. I haven't researched The Lyrans them. are, they, they're the carrier, they're called the carrier of Christ consciousness is what the, and they are, they are very, um, a lot of Lyrans is where we get lion from. They, a lot of them can shape shift into lions. Uh, Magdalene was pri primarily Lyran. And I will say guys, and I will put a link up. Uh, 
to my Amazon affiliate link, but the Sophia code um, gets into oh, yeah. some of this um, with Magdalene and with Hathor and Isis. So Magdalene, the Magdalene order, so that what became the Magdalene order, which was Lyran, they were in, so the Magdalene, this is what's crazy. So the Magdalene are not crazy, but cool. The Magdalene order, which was the order of the red rose, they were red capes. Um, and they were, their job was pr primarily to defeat demonic. They would shape shift into lions to defeat demonic activity. You can see that metaphorically, or you can see it as literal, probably a bit of both. But they were this Lyran group within the priesthood of Isis, which was a serious group. So do you, right. that's where you see how they're kind of coming Everything's together. Everything's all connected. Yes. And yes. so then we get to us, which is the great school. You know, we have every school, I mean, sorry, every planet is a school. Mm -hmm. Every planet is some form of institution. And so the planet Earth is the greatest of institutions because we have not evolved to the higher levels yet. So it's, it's sometimes when you are a higher density being and you are in a school of a lower density, it makes it a bit challenging sometimes. But this is where where it comes um, into play. And I, and I want to recall, and I can't recall what Billy talks about. He talks about, you know, the... The culture is being created, you know, and uh, being created in in what we would call a science lab or, or cloning, if you will. It, 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 he talked about that to a degree with Iggy and I can't remember the other person's name, but you know how they create them. And so this is, you have a master geneticist in what we would consider today creating this, the, the ultimate DNA strain that houses, you know, something from each uh, galactic being yeah. and when the conditions are right both internally and externally you can access this information but throughout the centuries and civilizations hey Lemuria and Atlantis I mean they were able to access more of that information than we are now and people say oh well just because it was you know thousands of years ago they weren't as smart as we were uh, no, it's kind of like the opposite. <laughs> listen, they, we are like stone people, stone age people compared, compared to, what, to them. Yeah. Yeah. I like mean, our cell phones are nothing compared to the technology ha they had, the information they knew. I mean, and isn't that like you look back at these old manuscripts, like even biblically? Yeah. They're talking about seeing aliens and like having communication and like these people would pop, these humanoid beings would pop in and like say, so they had even more hey. knowledge. <laughs> yeah, they were like, oh yeah, that's my cousin from Octurian up there, just wave, you know? Like they, they, right, exactly. Yeah, and we all of a sudden got, well, actually he taught, in the Emerald Tablets, Thoth does talk about that, that after the Great yeah. Flood, um, we went back to living in the caves and completely, for, and we were we're still in that recovery process to recover that, mem that those memories of who we really are. Right, and that's, and that's why I always call this, unlike my peers, they call it the Great Awakening. This is why I always call it the Great Remember because we are in the space of remember because now you have any child that was born after 2012, they come here with pretty much their full memory up to about age five and they begin to forget. Yeah. That's because, you know, they lose access to that connection. They lose that tether. And so now with understanding that our DNA has everything that we need in it to access it, we then have to relearn how to access that energy information, which is what I'm in the process of doing. Because, you know, and I find it fascinating. So I'm like five, seven, 160 pounds, right? You think that someone from my size, I would need to take a lot of medicine, you know, in the beginning of, of, of really learning how to do this. And when I say medicine, I mean plant medicine, people, yeah. whether it's ayahuasca, mushrooms, whatever, DMT, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's fascinating because <laughs> right exactly so you have the pineal gland which is which is the size of a pea and you have and you take this medicine that's maybe about an ounce maybe less depending on your tolerance or or your acclimation to it and just that little bit of medicine creates this profound change in the body or five, six, seven hours, depending on how much you take. And I find that fascinating because, you know, I look at a, I look at a seven pound dog 
and they would need as much. And so everything is, and I say this just to point out that everything is relative, depending yeah. on what your belief is. And the belief of how do we access this information through the through Mother Earth herself by providing and creating these tools, these resources, like, hey, take this. I want you to remember who you are. I don't care how many times you have to take it because there's so much other stuff that's going on in the in your body, in the energetic field that t- that is here to assist, cleanse, and clear you. So you to for you to remember who you are, to remember the greatness that you are. And this is what talks talks about in the Emerald Tablets because there there's so much pollution in our area, and not just you now physically, but also energetically that it clouds the energy. So just remember the time when we didn't have any. And back when there was civilization, they had technology that was in harmonization with the bodily fields, with the cellular structures that enhanced all of that. So you know, when people talk about temples and things like that, it's because those spaces were uh, not only sacred, but also the space to where we can harmonize our field of energy internally and externally. So, you know, it's, it's not just about going some to one place and worship, but it's also about understanding who you are. And that's I, what I'm getting to at the core of this is remembering who we are and understanding who we are and understanding the power and shift that we have in ourselves that we have access to to create a better version of self. Absolutely. And I'm a huge, I know we've, we've talked about this before. I'm a huge fan of and a huge supporter of like micro dosing. And I always, um, which for those who don't know, that's like psychedelic mushrooms. You take a minuscule amount every day. So you can still listen. If you take a full amount of a day, you're not gonna be able to function. You're going to be in your own world, which is a great thing to do too. But you just know if you get the full dose, you're not going to be available for anybody but yourself. Um, but when you micro dose, you can do it you can just be your normal self and it, cause it's su- such a small amount you're taking every day. But I'm a huge fan of these psychedelics. And I will tell you the first time I ever did mushrooms, like as a really young person for fun, like a day trip, I look back on that now. And I remember towards the end of that day, I had this huge realization. I was out cause you got to do it outside, you know, be in nature. It was raining and I was sitting there and I remember and I and I sat there and I was like, oh, this is all like a, a simulation that we've created to like know who we are. And I was really young at the time. And this was before I had went off to India. And basically everything I realized in that experience was what the Yoga Sutras were teaching. That, yeah, this is a school and everything you're, you're doing is a simulation to, to understand yourself. You know, Thoth constantly in the Emerald Tablets is referring to us as magic. We're magic, you know, yeah. and that's the beautiful thing. And um, you're right. And so, yeah, for I hope he's watching our friend who was who asked that question. I would just highly suggest if if you if you're comfortable with it, doing finding a plant medicine with a teacher. The but you know, even if it's ayahuasca or peyote or ayahuasca's, that's a that's a big you, one. If, if, yeah, you only have you can only sit with a, a trained shaman. Yes. One hundred percent. If you're doing ayahuasca, it needs to be with a all peyote, peyote, all peyote. ayahuasca trained shamans. Yes, I've done Lachuma, which is uh, also San Pedro. I've done that on my own. I've done much on my own. You know, without having uh, a shaman or even a, a, what they call now, which is kind of trendy, which I think is smart, but also kind of silly. A, a trip sitter, someone to watch you while you take your journey. Like, yeah, just, just make sure I'm not going to do anything crazy. Well, let's explain. Okay, yeah, because there is, and I will tell you, before lockdown happened, we were planning a trip to Peru to do dieta, which is like 10 days of, of ayahuasca in the Amazon jungle. And to be honest with you, I was more, I, mean, I, I was going to do it, but I was way more stressed out about that than ever any of my trips to India because it's intense, right? Like, ayahuasca is not a party drug, you guys. Like, it's not. No, it's, it's, <laughs> It it is great grandmother energy that if you fight her, she will kick and and pull and just you until you eventually surrender. Yeah, and my boyfriend's done a lot. He's done a lot of ayahuasca. His friend is one of those babysitters 
that um, is, so what happens in a lot of these ceremonies these workshops as they're called is you have the shaman there who presents the plant medicine the tea that you drink and then a lot of people either one person per sitter or a couple there are people there that are very experienced with the ex with it and i'm one of them and they babysit so because you have people throwing up you got people having like major come to Jesus moments. You have people you're, you know, and so you have someone there to kind of monitor that person and make sure they're not going to hurt themselves. And of course the shaman comes around and if they need to give them more medicine, they will, or if they need to chant over them, they will. Um, but every person I know who's ever experienced ayahuasca, they come out changed for the better and yeah. they come out understanding things for the better. Yeah. No, it's funny because I, I remember, I, how do we even get here? I don't know, but I, I remember when oh. I, right. <laughs> but no, I remember when I was first asked to be a helper in the system. And it was the, it was a life changing experience for me because I've done medicine before and I understood how it worked. I did, and we had a really amazing, and still do have an amazing relationship. And the moment where I was asked to be uh, an assistant, and and I'll just tell this really quick, is that I was asked to be the door. And so this is a small ceremony, about uh, 20 people, which is considered small, 15, 20 people. And it was the shaman, his wife, and then someone to play the drums. Mm -hmm. And they were on one side of the altar. On the other side of the altar, you have the person who mans the fire. And then you have a space that's a gap, which is four. And then you have someone like me off the door. I was literally the door. And how I explain it to people, so I'm like a glorified bouncer where I, where I bounce people's energy. And it's like, if it's not good, I send it back to them. Or if I need to help them with something else, I and so it's just amazing and how and it, and it helped me so much in the work that I do to understand energy and different levels and different frequencies and so it's and I'm saying all of this because not only does the medicine provide you with the path to remembering yourself but it also helps you to understand the energetic presence of yourself helps you to remind you of the energetic presence of other people you know and for those of you who watch past episodes of my show my co-host now have always talked about you have to sit in a space of discernment to really understand who you are before you can allow anyone else into your energy. Because, you know, we often talk about, oh, I want to be in a relationship. Oh, I want my family to love me. Oh, I want my family to like me. Oh, well, screw them if they don't like me. They don't, I don't like them anyway. And it's like, it's either one way or the other. And that's because we are in this process of really understanding who we are. Yeah. And even now as I sit here, you know, 47 years old, I'm still learning about myself. I mean, I know who I am pretty much, but then, you know, I'm different, different than I was last week. I mean... Oh, and thank God, right? Like, I think about myself, like, at 20 years old, and, you know, I'm 40 now, and, like, thank God I'm not that same person anymore. And that's the same... <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. You have a sense of self. Like, you always have this yeah. sense of self, but it's it, the ever-evolving... under, And that's why we're here. If you're still a lot... I always say on this channel, Hillis, that... I don't think human should be a noun. I think human should be a verb because we came here to human. We came here to be in these bodies and to our spirit okay. experience that it's like, and so when you think about it that way of humaning, you know, yeah. you're here to work on something. You, you, you don't have to have all the answers. And I, I, um, I will say too, I was doing a ceremony yesterday with my friend, um, Cindy for the, <laughs> I know the Muna key rights, which is awesome. She's Peruvian. Right. And so, and she, we did the ceremony and we talked about like, you know, because it's very, all these ancient cultures are really into like honoring your ancestors and something came up and it was this huge realization. And I, and I'm, I'm saying this because I think regardless, regardless of what your race is, regardless of where you are now in the world, what your socioeconomic background is, you are carrying karma of fear from your ancestors. And I had that moment. I and mean, I think about me as predominantly European you think about the witch hunts, right? So these women that were carrying in, in the Celtic or Druid cultures, which would be like our 
for white people, Celtic or Druid would be like the alchemy of Egypt for it's the same type of understanding, but just different cultures. And so when the church started to take over and they started to get really big and powerful, they started doing these witch hunts. And so women are mostly women, some men too, who are maybe herbalists or healers were now being murdered for being witches. And so that fear and that's this is true in every culture so if you it are coming from a culture that, that was conquered if you are coming from any any throughout the history of man your ancestors had to survive and had to hide parts of themselves in order to survive so that you could be here now and yeah. part of i think what happens with a lot of people hillis is they're carrying that karmic fear in their dna from their ancestors and they don't even realize that's what that is and so yeah. I think that causes a panic in people to arise sometimes when right now you are the hopes and dreams your ancestors wanted. You are exactly. able to live in a world where you can express this now without fear, so hopefully without fear of having another witch. I don't know. Right now I'm just, you know. There's, I, there's other forms of that going on. It just takes on another form. Yeah. But, you know what's interesting? You know, you talked about creating the word human as a verb and that's interesting because it takes me back to one of the things that i started really learning about and and kind of teach a little bit i haven't really began to teach it completely yet because i'm in the space of still unfolding it as this was given to me and only and i've only heard one other person speak of this and we are now emerging into what the new human is and that's h-u-e-m-a-n not human and because and as I, as I say this and i'm getting chills because back in ancient civilizations this is what the other galactic beings uh referred to us as, as human and as you know time went on you know scientists like oh no that can't be right that doesn't mean what it means and you know you have the homo sapien and all these scientific terms and everything but no, the human, H-U-E-M-A-N, and it is the meaning of the full spectrum, the spectrum of the galactic universe, the spectrum of the galactic people on the earth, the galactic people. Because, you know, people always, you know, I shouldn't say, I'm trying to find a way to say it without being offensive, but there's no real way to kind of say it. Just say it. We're good, you know, we're good at triggering people on this channel. <laughs> so, you know, because a, a, a lot of the culture, a lot of the traditions, a lot of the the planet comes from Africa, the yeah. motherland. You know, and, and a lot of people either own it or dismiss it. And the human descended from there because there the the land was rich nutrients and rich in culture, rich in, in, in every, in all aspects. And if before the land mass separate, you had, you know, Africa and India and South Asia, you had all of that together. And that there was the melting pot of planet where you had all of the full spectrum of who we are, of who we embody descended from there. And as we have uh, descended out from there, <laughs> uh, we have then allowed for ourselves to go off into these other aspects of the world in which you talk about, you know, the European with the blue eyes and having you know, snow blindness. I mean, that's snow blindness, uh, being able to we see. We don't have, we don't get snow blindness. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, yeah, you don't get snow blindness. And that's because, you know, just like the animals and the insects, humans have learned to adapt to their environment. And then when we had less distractions, we were able to adapt quicker and more in depth and, and faster. But now as time has moved on, we have kind of settled, and if you will, of, well, you know, I'm okay with how I look. Oh yeah, I'm okay with, with my body. And, and we're, we're forever wanting to change who we are by dyeing our hair, wearing contacts, going to the gym, you know, eating right, all these things. But the first thing is we have to remember inherently we have the ability to unlock what we need to unlock once we tap into the human of who we are. You know, it doesn't matter where we are, where we live, and so forth and so on. It's just in that space of really understanding that 
we are the full spectrum of life and it is living within us. When I wanted to pull this up, so there is a lot, and I want I pulled up the world map because I want you guys to look at Africa, South America, Florida here, and the Mediterranean Sea here. And I there's a lot of speculation that ancient Egypt is actually in the southeastern United States and that the Mississippi River is the Nile because they found so many um, artifacts from Egypt here. It's just there's countless evidence. And I was thinking about this today because a lot of the Tartarian people will say that they moved after the mud flood. They moved they moved the archaeology over to Africa so it would confuse us. But guys. When you talk about the earth separating, what if we pulled Florida? What if we merged these together and we put Florida would fit right into this Mediterranean here? And then South America fits right into Egypt or right into Africa here. And so we're looking at one big land mask. All of these, this the cradle of life really seems yeah. to be both locations. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, so it's all here. It's all there. It's all there. And yeah, it's 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 so unbelievable. And this is what the brothers of darkness don't want us to know. They want us to stay divided by that which is actually the thing that brings us together. It's that which brings us together. Is that yeah. imagine if we actually if all the people, all the earthlings will say on this planet figured this out and we like said, "You know what? We're going to sit down and we're going to figure this shit out because the black people have certain certain talents that white people don't have and vice versa. And with the Asians and with the Latin people. And then there's weaknesses that one race will have where the other one will have a strength. And if we actually work together, we could be one of the greatest planets on in this galaxy because we are we, we have that. And it makes me kind of emotional. And I really start to think about like all the galactic heritage that we have and how all these galactic communities or whatever they call themselves are kind of just waiting for us to like come on you guys like come on you guys like you are our yeah. descendants you are our i just think it's a speaking of aliens i think it's hysterical that the united states government confirmed aliens are real and nobody gives a shit everybody's like yeah duh we know like yeah, we know <laughs> that, you know like uh, 40 50 60 years ago i mean give me give me i mean tell me something else are you going to produce an alien now you're going to produce yeah, an like, alien fast i mean come on brah. like we're like brah like we know like, like we, we've been like, like, yeah. they're like the media's like guess what guys aliens are real we're like uh-huh yeah you just you, you just now think we yeah okay you know so so many of yeah, us are, i mean heck it even goes back to me to, to some people even believe that mushrooms came from the aliens. I'm like, yeah, I believe that. Come on, I mean, spores traveling through space, being seated on another planet. I mean, spores can travel in empty space. Come on. It, it's, it's, it's just sometimes things that we feel a common sense or not that much of a stretch. It's, it, it's the media or someone else putting that energy or the information out to say, oh, well, here's more, more of a tidbit, more of a, well, come on, give us something that we don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, the, what, what's fascinating is that they don't, that the media or other people, like, they don't give the humans enough credit. Right. You know? Because, yeah, some of us are lazy. Sometimes I'm lazy. I don't like to do my own research, but sometimes I do it anyway. But, you know, there's, there's this space because now, you know, we are really moving into a new part of the galaxy. Literally, the whole entire solar system, all nine planets, including the sun and all the stars, are moving into another dimension, to another density. Yeah, another space. density. Yep. And they cannot, that's that whole thing, people, you can't stop what's coming, you can't stop, no, you can't stop what's coming, and yeah, we're a whole lot smarter than they give us credit for. And I think that, you know, there and as you guys, I mean, you guys are following along on the Emerald Tablets on my channel. I always suggest people get their own copy though, because this stuff is so powerful. Because Thoth talks about this, and the beautiful thing is, we were saying before we started recording, guys, is Thoth has he's incarnated in like every single culture. So yeah. he's um, he's Odin from the probably so hanging out right now. I know Viking. <laughs> that's Odin. That's the you know like. Like this information is for everyone. And I wanted to bring something up because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on. You know, I wanted to say something really quick and, and it just came to me and, and it still rings true to this day. 
is that if you want to hide something from people, put it in a book because people don't read. Isn't that, amen, like, isn't that, and I love, as you can tell, I love books. I have, <laughs> I think if we were to have, like, a major apocalypse, and then, like, a thousand years later, somebody uncovers my apartment and saw all my books, they'd be very confused as to, as to what faith I actually was, because <laughs> I literally have books on, like, all of them, and they're all read, and they're all marked in, they're like, who the hell was this weirdo? I got my tarot cards, I got, like, you know, they're like, who the hell was this weirdo? Like, did she what exactly uh, i don't even know what, what race she was because she's got every but yeah books are amazing and they and the thing about like things like the emerald tablets and all these books is you get so much more the more you read it, the more you get from it and so yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put you on the spot hillis Ooh. i'm kind of thinking would you want to like lead our audience in like a five minute like meditation yeah i can definitely do that I'll I'll definitely. Get you started um I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the screen on you, and I'm gonna like I'm actually gonna go close the door and step away while you're doing this, so that any so I can try to close off any outside noise. But yeah, all right, guys. Yeah, I'm more than than uh, happy to do that. And you know what's so funny? I was like, something special is gonna happen during the show, and here it is. Let's do it. So five, however long you want to do it. And just, I just kind of was feeling that. I don't know if you know this, Hillis, but Magdalene's one of my guides too. And she kind of sits right here and like <laughs> says things to me. So um, I'm going to put the screen on Hillis, you guys. So if you're not in a position right now where you can do this, just mark this and come back to it later. But Hillis, I'll have people that can get comfortable. You tell them how you want them to set up to get into yeah. this. All right. So let yeah. me put this on you. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, it is the best space for you now. Doesn't matter if you are sitting up, laying down, doesn't matter. Because in this moment is perfection. Perfection for you to receive. Perfection for you to understand. And perfection for you to expand as we allow for these beautiful energies to open as I connect to and channel. Huh. This is interesting. This has been in my field, so it's been present as we tune in and connect to the energies of Egypt, the connection to the energy of Sirius A, B, and C as we connect to and allow for these divine energies to be open and received. And as you're taking a deep breath, taking a deep breath through your stomach into your diaphragm. And as you exhale, push your stomach back, pull it back to your spine to activate the energy to move up to your pineal gland, opening and activating gamma energy. Let's do a few of these breaths. Fill your stomach up and pull it back to your spine. And as you have activated this, this energy of receptivity, we allow the energy of energy of information, the energy of exchange for you to receive your heritage, the information of your birthright of being this human, this being that contains all life, all aspect of life, just here on this planet and beyond into the galaxy. Allow for this activation of energy to be seated within you. Allowing for yourself to come into alignment and remembrance of self to remember your true essence. <sighs> to remember that you are part of the planet, that you come from her, that you are both from her that you come from the expanse of universe, that your energy is so potent that it allows you to remember who you are in your dreams, 
in your waking state where you get flashes, remembrances, confirmations of who and what your soul is, allowing for this newness of information to come to you at the speed that you are comfortable with. You have to remember the joys, the loves, and your soul lineage, which is the most important for you to begin to remember every incarnation before to where you then can access the knowledge and the wisdom to access your abilities to remember the truth of who you are, the source of which you came, and the partners, the guides who have assisted you in this path in knowing the truth. And yes, this is for you. Yes, it's for all of you to know that the great wisdom you seek is within. The knowledge that you hold is here. The tools are all around you. And you will know them when you see them. In contact with them, you will learn and know how to wield them to grace, ease, and confidence to clear the fear that no longer serves you as we allow for this beautiful golden light to bathe you. To hold you in both your waking and sleep state, your dream states as you travel through the planet and the universe and beyond to seek what is true for you. Uh -oh. <laughs> that was awesome, Hillis. I'm going, I'm actually going to ask you, I'm thinking we should do this as part one. And we should yeah. do a part two next week, um, whenever you're free. And I, cause I'm going to look into more of, I'm, you've got me really fascinated. I'm a nerd. See, I'm a nerd. I love my research. I, I Nancy drew the shit out of things. Um, so, <laughs> the United States government's got nothing on me, man. <laughs> so, I can spot a hoax a mile away. Cause I've done a shit ton of research anyway. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to look into the, the, Do the Dogon people as well. And I'm going to yeah. ask our audience, um, if you, I mean, I, this episode, I've been, I, I mean, I, I could keep you here all day, Hillis, because I just feel like this conversation is just so magical and it's so important for every single human, human on the planet, whether you're in America, Canada, Latin America, Africa, like y'all, we're all earthlings. Literally, we are all earthlings. We got to start playing together because. You know, that is the one thing. If they did show us pictures of an alien invasion, I think eventually all the humans would be like, you know what? We're going to stop fighting with each other because we got to protect our planet together. Wasn't well, there well, it always the way when there is a common enemy or a great fear that is beyond what is present? Isn't that always the way to where we all can come together? Yeah, like, and be like, you know, oh, we got to stop fighting because this is all of our planet. Like, this is planet belongs to all of us. So... Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to ask our audience and I again I want to really thank the person. Let me go back and look at your handle um who asked that question. So push the button 8723 push the button 8723. Thank you my friend so much for asking that question and for being um I'll put it back up again here on the screen for being vulnerable enough to ask the question and yes. so that you were confused and um, it takes a lot of strength to say that you're confused. And 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 I thank you, push push the button 8723 for um reaching out and asking that because you you've now inspired a, a series potentially on this. And I'll tell you what, push the button 8723 if you email me at esoteric at gmail.com and put um thoth t h o t h in the, the subject line. Um I will send you if you don't if you don't already have a copy of the Emerald Tablets. I'll send you a copy of the Emerald Tablets so you can have a good starting point um, to to start your own research into this heritage. So push the button eighty seven twenty three. Just make sure you email me at esotericatlanta at gmail .com if you want, and I will send you a copy of of Doriel's um, commentary 
um, in his translation of the Emerald Tablet. So you can start your own journey. And again, I just thank you so much. I mean, the vulnerability and asking questions like this is what open up conversations that end up allowing other people to have questions, answers that they, questions they didn't even know they had start to get answered. And so it's, it's, um, that's great. That's the, the path of the great scientist, right? A great scientist is always asking why, 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 why? Exactly. Exactly. So anyway, Hilla, so let's, let's plan on doing a part two of this. And I want yeah. you in the, in the, in the, in the description box, in the comment section, um, ask any questions you want. Um, I'm going to be putting Hillis's obviously his links uh, for his channel in the description box. Um, and can I leave your email for them, Hillis, if they want to book a, cause you're a healer as well, guys. So if, yeah, you, they, if, you, yeah, if, you, just, if you put my uh, tap link, it has all the ways to all get a hold of me. Yeah, so then to fill out the, the whole process. But I also want to mention, too, for those who, are, who live in New York, definitely go to the link in the description. The information is there also. But I plan on being in New York doing a two-day uh, seminar in New York. So for those in the New York area, you can see me in person. I, I wish I could go because that sounds like, listen, Hillis, I'm such a freaking little weirdo. If you and I got to go travel the world together doing all these little weirdo events. <laughs> I know, life changing, right? I know. They're so fun. <laughs> like I like I wanna go to I wanna go um uh, my 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 next trip I'm planning. I do you know Casadega, Florida? No. It's the home. It's like the home of the psychics of the world. It's a vortex. Oh, you know, someone did, maybe you told me that, but someone else may have told me that too. It's no. near Jacksonville. It's like between Jacksonville and Orlando, and it's got apparently got a, the same vortex, like the same power as like Stonehenge. Oh, so um, and it's I have to plan the trip. I know. I want to go so bad. I'm like, I, it's tiny town. You have to be registered psychic with them in order to live in the town. But I mean, what? I know you have to go through a registration process. It's it's wild, y'all. They take. I I listen. I geeked out. I watched all. I watched all the videos. Well, maybe maybe I get a maybe I get a pass as I am on the uh, Edgar Casey list. There you go. I mean, they are so you should look it up. It's it's yeah. seems like in they take they have like all these different readers, healers, and they have even a place where you can take pictures and it shows your aura, your pet's aura, so you can see like what you're. Yeah, I know. I, I can't remember. I can't think of the name of that machine right now. But they've actually there's a they've updated that machine over the decades. So I love what it's like this tiny little thing that used to be like this big contraption. Now it's like this tiny little. Yeah. Well, when I figure out what I'm going, I will let you know, Hillis, because I I want to go so bad. I, I did a story on it. I did a story on its creator, and uh, it's six hours from me, so I'm like, it's not that far. Like, let's go. Let's go. It's too hot right now, y'all. Listen, it is too hot right now. So yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go. Yeah, yeah, you're just in Atlanta. I'm in down here, South Florida, so it's a lot hotter. I mean, we um we literally last when we were in Florida last our dog almost like my boyfriend thinks he almost died and my dog's from South India because <laughs> oh, it was yeah, so hot and he almost was like <laughs> like he was so so we have to be careful about letting him <laughs> out because it's so freaking hot but anyway you guys um I again will have all the links all the stuff in the description box below so you can check out Hillis you can make you can communicate with Hillis if you would like a healing or start to work with Hillis um in, in your own path and your own self discovery and I thank you Hillis for taking an hour out of your day your busy day you're the person. <laughs> that literally, Hillis the per is the person that keeps Asia going. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't think Asia would exist if it weren't for Hill Hillis, because he's the one that literally. And a lot of you guys know because you've communicated with Hillis. He knows everything about the company, the system. I mean, he literally is the magic behind the the uh, the, the the product to keep it going. And so I'll let you get back to your day, Hillis. And I thank you again so much. And I can't wait to do it again, you guys. Once again, show Hillis some love like this we get shadow banned a lot on this channel which means we're probably doing something really right if we're getting shadow banned so make sure you share this channel out with your friends and family so that you can help other people find their path to healing and being their authentic selves so we love you guys we'll talk to you soon bye everybody